Anyway, let's talk to our companions. Speaking of nice, Gale. I've known a few warlocks in my time. Talented, of course, though sometimes too eager to listen to the devils on their shoulders. <laughs> Comes with the territory, unfortunately. It does. You're talking about... Who are you talking about, actually? The warlocks in your time? I was wondering, by the way, that condition of yours, why does it require magic? Think of it as tribute. The kind a king might pay to a more powerful neighbor to avoid invasion. As long as I pay, there will be peace. But should I ever stop, along comes a war. I can assure you, the battlefield would extend well beyond the borders of my body alone. Are you a wild mage or something? Or was or is he a warlock or whatever? All right, uh, that's that's good. Uh, I I think I think it's gonna be fine for now. Does he complain? I don't know that he complains. You know, if he needs one. I I hope he does, because why wouldn't he? Will. The Blade of Frontiers at your calling. How does the Blade of Frontiers end up chasing a devil in the hells? Carlax fires raged in Baldur's Gate before she escaped to Avernus, as my source told it. And she was planning to return. One of the archdevil Zariel's own. Chaos incarnate, a devil with pure fire for a heart. I made my way to Avernus to stop her. She fled from my reach. Even climbed aboard the Mind Flayer ship as it screeched through the hells. I followed in close pursuit. I can't bear to imagine the lives Karlak might be taking. The damage she might be doing. Terrible, terrible person. Uh, who is this source of yours, by the way? A powerful friend with a keen interest in... Privacy. I'm sworn to say no more. Oh, this powerful friend has a keen interest in something else. Unless this is really poorly written, or actually maybe poorly acted and directed thus, uh, because the way he said it makes it seem like he just sort of cut himself cut himself short and not just said, you know, a powerful friend with keen interest in privacy as a, as a sort of a sort of a retort. Okay, let's move on to other matters. All right. Anything more we should discuss? Tell me, Will. How did you come to be the Blade of Frontiers? My father once said, One does not pursue a champion's life. One merely answers its call. So it was for me. I was hunting near the Cloakwood when I heard it. A child crying out from a lone farmstead. I found him in the fields flanked by goblins. His mother's corpse bled into the soil next to him. I don't remember much of the battle. But I remember drying the boy's tears after. And he named you the Blade of Frontiers? No. But he named me friend. And that meant the world. But what of the others? The children never saved. The cries never heard. In the boy's tears, I finally saw the suffering wrought by the villains of the wild. The Frontiers demanded a blade. And so I heeded. It's nice to finally put a face to the name. And it's nice to meet someone of your talents. Having a worm wriggling in my skull didn't instill much confidence in the days ahead. With you as my ally, the future looks a little less daunting. Maybe I should get him in my team. But who, who do I give up for my team? Naturally not Lazel. And I kind of don't... And uh, Yeah, he's not coming in. I kind of want... <laughs> I kind of need his... <laughs> His class uh, in my team, honestly. But uh, but no, sorry. There's a there's a party limit. I've noticed I've noticed your stone eye. Did you lose it? No, it didn't lose it. It's right there. It's right there. Did you lose the your other eye, the non stone one in battle? A most vicious one, in fact. It's made from pure bloodstone, carved from the Galena Mountains just north of the Moon Sea. A reminder that sometimes blood must be shed and sacrifices must be made. Ah, but that story is reserved for lifetime friends and calmer days. Sure. Sure indeed. 
Hmm. And just drinking. Staying there and drinking. Lazel. What is up? Chuck, be wary of false promises. The missing druid, Halsin, was it? He may be talented, but only a Githyanki Zathis can cleanse an embedded tadpole. Yeah, we're I, this that's a pretty big dilemma for the moment. Are you sure the crash is our only path to a cure? Entirely. I was as devoted to my studies as I was to my training. Each crash contains a Zathisk purification device. So I learned from the writings in the Kalir Library. The library was a gift from Vlakith herself that we may gain total understanding. That kind of wisdom is very valuable. Countless scholars roam the astral sea and beyond, observing the ways of our lessers, exploring planes so distant order turns to chaos and cold fires rage. The planes are ever quaking and their peoples ever shifting. The Githyanki possess an eternity of knowledge. Yet we still collect more, infinities upon infinities. Is it me, or have you been looking at me differently? I have a confession. I was too hasty to judge you. I thought you witless, gutless, unimpressively bland. Can I assume a compliment is incoming? I don't pay compliments. I only say what is true. You've proven me wrong at every turn. You are efficient, dominant. Courageous. I swear, you would tear the horns off one dragon for plunging into another. You've gained my respect, and more still, my yearning. When I come near, your odor alone is enough to make my neck sweat and my hair stand on end. Wait a minute. The, I, oh, that's way too... <laughs> so earlier today I read... I read about a bug in this game that has been patched, and as of right now, I am playing with a patched version. Uh, I don't know if it's retroactively patched or how it works, but as, a, as far as I understand it, the thresholds uh, of uh, sympathy that your companions have towards you, the thresholds are very low, uh, or set very low, or too low, I suppose, for what the creators of the game actually wanted in terms of developing the relationship with them. And uh, for a moment there, I thought, wait a minute, am I in the end game already with Lazel? No, no, this is just her saying, oh, I like, I, I think you're pretty. Um, <laughs> I think she's just, she comes on really, really strong. Um, I, um, I'm gonna say, I'm, I kind of, I kind of want to um, sort of pick on her. So I'm gonna say this. Hold on, are you coming on to me? <sighs> Isn't it obvious? I want to taste you. Perhaps tonight. Perhaps later. But I want it all the same. Do you? <laughs> my face. What was my face? Yeah. I want to share my body with you. Yes. Perhaps one night soon, I will come to your bunk and take what is mine. Until that night comes, I shall keep enjoying your scent. All right. Uh, that's 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 okay, Lazel. I. Why can't we enjoy her scent? Speak. We can't. We don't. We don't have that ability. Um. You've said you've earned, or I've earned your respect. Why are you so rude? Rude all the time. If you must know. Vlakith requires everything of her children. I can't count how many bruises I've inflicted. Can't measure how much blood I've drawn in the Undying Queen's name. I know only blood red and death black. My mind is silver and my body steel. I am what I must be. Say what I must be. To survive every beast I face and every wound I bear. Say what I must be. That's a very self-aware explanation. All right, uh, I'll see you later. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Sniff, sniff, sniff as well, I suppose. 
Astarion. So, we're traveling with the famed Blade of Frontiers. I feel safer already. Do you, though? Because your face kind of didn't. It, I, I don't think you do. Um, oh, the Moonrise Tower. So it is the towers, yeah. What do you think is waiting for us at Moonrise Towers? Who knows? Drow? Mind flayers? Death? Hopefully not ours. But maybe answers. If we can convince the right people to talk. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Traveler's chest. Is that all about? Chatterboxes to bard? What? Periwinkle undergarments. This charming pieces hue reminds of the flower of sprouting from anonymous graves. That's not... Wait, what? That I, did, I did not misread that. Bewildering adventures back. Wait a minute. I, wait, what the heck? Those are heavy? No, they're not heavy. I do need these, though. Peculiar clothing chests. I'll take those. Mask of the Shapeshifter. Uh, which is an item from... The Pills of Eternity... T oh, sorry. Original Sin 2, I think. Cast Shapeshift. Can I wear that? It is a helmet, though. I'll put it over here. You can. Look how ugly it is. <laughs> Just hide it. Yeah, these um, peculiar clothing chests. What's that all about? I thought it was four. Cape of the Red Prince. Loot of Meriwether Bard. Is that Losa? Bicorn of the Sea Beast. Yeah, the Sea Beast. A needle of the Outlaw Rogue. I forget his name, though. Um, I'll give it to you. I don't think I need these. I'll take these, though. Yeah, why Why is it marked for? Oh, it's the items it has inside. Right? Yeah, look at that. Cool. Okay, put that over there. We're not going to use that. And the Bewildering Adventures back. It has food. Poutine? Haggies? Can I take all? I can't. Oh, it's heavy, though. But it wasn't going to be heavy. That sucks. Potion of flying? Wait, what? Drink the ability... Oh, yeah, fly is a... Is a Portion of mind reading. Able to read thoughts to certain creatures while speaking with them. Heal giant strength. Yep, yeah, that's very powerful. It's probably a potion um, in the game normally. All right. Let's go to bed. Nobody wants to talk to me? I don't think anybody wants to talk to me. Maybe I should uh, wear the periwinkle undergarments. What kind of undergarments am I wearing? It, just underwear. It looks the same. I'll put it over there. There we go. Much better. How do I sort by type, please? How do I see... Oh, no, this is not visible at the moment. It's here, right? They look very elf-like. It's not elf-like, but they're, they're lace all over the place. It rhymed as well. So I don't know if that's going to matter for certain scenes that are upcoming, but, you know, maybe. Maybe it is. You don't rest well, flitting between dreams and nightmares. Maybe you break your meditation because you know something is wrong. Or maybe you just get lucky. They're sniffing me as well. Shit. Do I smell that bad? No, no. It's not what it looks like. I swear. I... 
I wasn't going to hurt you. I, I just needed, well, blood. There, in the dim firelight, you see him for what he really is. A vampire, a slave to sanguine hunger. I can't believe I didn't see it. We even found the boar you snacked on. It's not what you think. I'm not some monster. I feed on animals, boars, deer, kobolds, whatever I can get. I'm just too slow right now. Too weak. If I just had a little blood, I could think clearer. Fight better. Please. A strange sensation courses through you, and your companion's mind unfolds, secrets half revealed. Did you see his, uh, his bite neck thing, or neck bite scar? I can use my wisdom to search for the truth. How, why didn't you tell me? At best, I was sure you'd say no. More likely, you'd ram a stake through my ribs. No. I needed you to trust me. And you can trust me. You tried to bite me. How can I trust you? Because we don't have a choice. Not if we're going to save ourselves from these worms. I need you alive. You need me strong. Please, only be a taste, I swear. I'll be well, you'll be fine. And everything can go back to normal. Fine, but not a drop more than you need. Really? I... Of course. Not one drop more. Let's make ourselves comfortable, shall we? <laughs> His face. <laughs> Why do you have to frown, dude? It's like a shard of ice into your neck. A quick, sharp pain that fades to throbbing numbness. Your breath catches. Your pulse quickens. Ooh. That's enough. It's an easy check. Hmm? Oh, of course. That... That was... amazing. My mind is finally clear. I feel strong. I feel... happy. You're baked out of your mind is what you feel like. I'm... I don't. That felt wrong. Ah, don't be so dramatic. This is just a little transaction between friends. And look what you've gained. Together, we can take on the world. I hope so. I look forward to seeing you fight. Shouldn't take long. So many people need killing. Now, <laughs> if you'll excuse me, you're invigorating, but I need something more filling. This is a gift, you know. I won't forget it. You watch as he stalks towards the forest, stronger, more confident, ready to hunt. No, oh, no, I'm all stinky. Bloodless. Minus one to attack roll, saving throws, and ability checks. Eh. It's whatever. Fel feels a bit woozy. Yeah. Sometimes it happens when I wake up. Hey, Astarion. Good morning. How do you feel? My neck hurts. How do you think I feel? Be grateful I'm not a true vampire, then. A bite from them, and you might wake up as a vampire spawn, like my good self. All of a vampire's hunger, but few of their powers. 
Any drawbacks I should know about? Oh, I've no idea. For 200 years, the sun would have turned me to cinders. Until the crash, when I woke up bathed in its light. Someone, or something, wants me alive. They've changed the rules. Standing in the sun, wading through a river, wandering into homes without an invitation. They're all perfectly mundane activities now. As for my other quirks, well, <laughs> we can figure those out in time. I'm sure we can. What's causing this? The Mind Flayer's parasite? That's my theory, but who knows? I'm just glad you're being sensible about these uh, revelations. I was worried people might turn up with torches and pitchforks. Although there's still time. So we're traveling with a vampire, are we? Of course we are. Word of warning, Astarian. I taste absolutely awful. <laughs> for his sake, he best not develop an appetite for Githyanki. I trust him. He won't hurt us. Uh, quite the opposite. I'm here in the spirit of openness and honesty to work together as a team. Maybe we could get him to wear a bell, dissuade any nighttime prowling. There now. We're all friends again. Shall we go? There's a long day ahead of us. He should wear a bell. I approve of this. I, I, I think that's good. It's good, actually. Wait, we can go over there? What are these camps? Why are they like this? I mean, it's really pretty and all, but why? <laughs> um, I don't think anybody else wants to talk to me. So, I mean, they don't have exclamation marks. Well met. Yeah. So, that's it. Let's continue our goblin murder by leaving camp. Ow. I'm still bloodless. I wonder... I'm actually going to save. I think. What's next, I wonder? Lesser restoration. Might actually fix that. There it is. And we used one of our spell slots immediately. Give up now. At the ready. Yeah. Lesser restoration and restoration in general are super important to have in Baldur's Gate 2 because we deal a lot with mummies and specifically vampires as well, but not just vampires. Anyway, where and how is the question. I can't go upstairs because this is the house. But I can. Well, I might be able to shoot at the ogres from up here. Yeah, look at that. Oh, can destroy these? Perfect. Oh, that's incredible. Cauldron doesn't matter. The rats are going wild. Yeah, because from here I might actually have. Yeah, it looks pretty good. That's a friendly looking shadow. That is a very good vantage point for me, I would say. And I think for Gale as well. Right? Not this again. Oh, yeah. This always. <laughs> what do you say, not this again? Uh, and I think for Lazel, she will use her. Amazing weapon. The very heavy great axe, for example. There's no reason... Well, actually, I say there's no reason to use spe specific weapons. They're very well might. I don't know what these guys are resistant to. They don't seem to have resistances. They might cast resistance on themselves. But not at the moment. Which means I should just use whatever I want. So Lazy is selected. 
We have a 1d10 plus 4. And a 1d12 plus 4. Yeah. Why wouldn't I use that? It's an amazing weapon. Of course, there's specific things that it has. Gargantuan cleave. But these are just actions. Like prepare. Sacrifice six movement speed to deal an additional three slashing damage with your melee weapon. That is amazing. That is amazing. That's an amazing weapon. Wow. That's really powerful. So we might actually just use that forever. Or for a while anyway. Um, so that's that. And we will keep... Into the shadows. I need to figure out who is going to... Well, actually, we could just do a cantrip. Yeah, I think a cantrip might be the best way to approach this. And the grease bottle. Very important. I am ready. Unseen as I was taught. Yeah, let's find out if uh, you were taught well. Because we're going to throw a cantrip here. Hmm. Yeah, let's do it. I can be subtle sometimes. So first off, we do not have range onto there. Can't afford any mistakes. So what I want to do is we could just do a guiding bolt. The higher level just does more damage. I don't think that's really that important. The most important aspect is that I um, guiding bolt the uh, Fank, the, the, the smart one. And now we're in combat. We rolled pretty high initiative. Enemy is surprised. Oh, no. That does throw my plan for a little bit. So this surprise is not a random chance. I think this always happens. This is really good. This is really good. Uh, let's change our plan then. Basically, this means that we will not take high ground. Which is a bit of a bummer. But it's not, you know, it's not terrible. It's all right. It's an all right drawback. Can't afford to stay idle. Uh, we actually, you know what? We should even get closer. Because I don't think like they they get over here. This is this that's perfectly hidden. So I go over here. I imagine I can jump through. I, it wouldn't make sense, would it? To jump through the, the detectable area? I don't think it would. But, uh... We're doing perception checks. Not sure why, because I don't remember them from my first attempt. But... Oh, it would be better from this side, wouldn't it? Okay, guys, come here. Let's attack from this side. Let's be smart. We're smart. Stop crouching. Because the reason of me not uh, not coming this way is because well, there's a, there's a few reasons, uh, but mostly because I didn't want to aggro them. Oh, they move, they move. That's that's bad times. Yeah, let's get you over there. So how how would they look? How would they move? Let's do it, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. Oh, what is that? Oh? All right. Guiding Bolt applies for two turns. That's really important because we absolutely need to kick that mage. Um, and Grease would also be pretty important. Waiting with bated breath. Yeah, let's see. So... Ensnaring strike. Man, this is it for ensnaring target. That's really good because they also get. Well, actually, it doesn't matter. But but after it doesn't matter now. But they also get disadvantage uh, at saving throws. It doesn't matter now because because a fog cloud could be interesting. Uh, mostly because uh, we are hopefully going to kill this guy and he's not going to save against anything. But, Hunter's Mark. Yes. Forgot about that. Joined the battle. Still have my turn to go. That's good. That's good. 
that is that is that is perfectly fine. And then we have Witch's Bolt, which is pretty awesome. We don't really have we have chromatic orb. That's right. We can choose the type of chromatic orb. Is that how that works? Hurdle is fear of thunder damage, but it isn't thunder damage, it's any kind of damage. So that's nice. Uh Yeah. So by doing this, I would also hit this guy. Let's see. Wait. How does that work? That doesn't look right. Do you see, do you see what I'm saying? What I'm seeing? Yeah, I'm going to save the game here. Because I don't know the mechanics. And I want to learn the mechanics. The mechanics are finicky. Actually, we have a key for that. It's the overview mode. Yeah, look at that. This should do damage to both of them, but it doesn't. So we reload. And more importantly, we really don't have much... I mean, I could I could cast Mage Ends down there. <laughs> but that would be suicide. What's known as suicide. Let's go with Witch Bolt. We have advantage. There we go. The roll is pretty rubbish, unfortunately. But we can handle that. It's not the worst thing. And Lazel is here anyway. So, we have Gargantuan Cleave. Swing your weapon with all your might. You can attack multiple targets, but become off-balanced. Which is... Must succeed as a strength-saving throw or fall prone. Wow. I, I'm actually a little bit scared of... Uh, of sending Lazel up in there. Because she's going to fail her uh, saving throw, and, and then she's going to be at the mercy of these guys. Right? So what I want... Is I want her to sneak past these guys. I think she can? She cannot. She did roll initiative, so it's, it's not the worst thing. Anyway, uh, you already have your action spent. I think there's a way to tell if your action is done or not. I would imagine that's... I think that gets a little bit... I don't know. Not enough movement. Like... Do I get to cast twice? I think I might. Wait. Does this guy not have... The hunter's guy... Uh, the guiding bolt anymore? I don't get... I don't understand. I don't understand why... Why not? But either way, we do um, not enough movement. Oh, that's a touch? Necromancy. It's a melee. Yeah, putrefy a creature with necrotic energy. Bane is interesting. Up to three creatures receive a minus 1d4 penalty to attack rolls and saving throws for 10 turns. I want that. That is, that is, that is great. And it's short enough range that it justifies me having had to be up here instead of ha casting it before. 70% though. It's not great. Bane, 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 Bane. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, wait, this is a bonus action. Shield of Faith. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what is the... Casting this spell at a higher level doesn't grant any additional benefits. Then why do you let me do that? Okay, uh, because I want to have her kind of disengaged here. That's important. Yeah, I don't... Oh, it becomes red. There it is. I understand now. Yeah, you're all surprised, so we're, we're good on that front. And we all have our turns. And all, of, all we all have our actions as well, I think. 